Next, we have Keith Larson with us today. How are you? Hello. So, uh, Keith Larson, what was your first job? Right out of school. I got hired at Quinnipiac, then college at the time, now, now university, to be the technical support staff person and an adjunct um, professor. And I'd only had an associate's degree, two year you know, degree out of Middlesex Community College, and, and it was just it worked out and I beat out 93 people for that job with higher degrees and it was uh, it was actually my portfolio. Middlesex has a great hands-on program and, and as a student we got to work on professional productions. Uh, the advanced students got to go out and shoot and edit for companies like Cheeseboro Ponds at the time, Stanley Tools and things like that. So I had a professional reel and uh, a job I had done straight out of high school before I went to college later. I, I, I took five years off from high school and went to college later. So um, the skills I learned wiring these test equipment, things that I really didn't care about at the time, just it was a job, actually paid off because I showed them in my job second interview at Quinnipiac that I could wire an edit suite together in about 15 minutes and neatly bundle the wires. They did, they were, you know, they'd never seen anything like that. So, so they hired me. Did someone recommend the job for you? Yeah, I got a call from a friend of mine. Um, his father was on the maintenance grounds crew at the school. And he's the one that told me about the job opening. And I was painting sets at Sonala Studios. And I was like, I, I don't even have a bachelor's degree. They want a master's degree. I'm not qualified for this. And he said, well, I wasn't qualified for my job here either. I only have a high school diploma, but I got the job. He goes, you know, if nothing else, go for the experience of going through the interview process. Okay. Maybe because I really didn't ever think I could get the job, I was relaxed and kind of playing with house money, if you will. You know, I just went in and said, ah, whatever, I'll do the best I can. I'm not going to get this thing anyway, and I did. Was it what you expected it to be? It, yes and no. Um, the experience with the students was really awesome. Um, I won't lie, it was difficult being only a year or two older than them at the time, and having to be their supervisor and, and their uh, mentor was kind of strange. You know, and I was warned many times about the stay away from the females, you know, because we're like the same age. And and I also had some students. I had this student, Phil Kearney, who now works at Yale University, who was twice my age. And I had to say, Phil, you know, I don't really like your work here. And, you know, it was it was a really incredible learning experience. There's a contrast in philosophies between myself and the school, though, in the end. Uh, I like to see the students you know use the place as a gym more or less you know you're paying your dues use this place you know be here 24 7 and get the most out of it and they had a different kind of thought on that so when the contract was up we decided that it wasn't working out uh, that yeah sounds... that's all right yeah but uh did you make any friends while there oh god yeah i'm still friends with a lot of the students yeah um and that was almost 20 years ago now yeah uh some are doing very well uh one of them tom kelly's a writer for the view you know he used to work for rosie o'donnell we're still in touch he's a comedian in new york and yeah a lot of them i'm still in touch with i found i saw one of them just got married the other day so yeah is there anything that you remember the most out of that experience i just remember the awkwardness of it because i was so young um and trying to find my way in the academic environment you know i made some i made a lot of mistakes and i know what mistakes i made um it, you know, it was a, just an overall growing process. You know, I took it very seriously. I did take it very, very seriously. I, I was not there to play games, but, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I wanted to be a comic book artist. I wanted to draw for Marvel comics in the worst way, <laughs> specifically Spider Man. Um, and, and I would, I mean, even high school, you know, that was the thing. I never paid attention in high school. I was drawing all the time in class. And everybody wanted me to draw pictures for them. And I drew and I drew and I drew and I drew. And I built up this whole portfolio. And I'd send my work to Marvel and hear nothing back. And and then I made the, the fatal mistake that a lot of students make. And that's listening to the guidance counselor. The job should be eliminated. The position is useless. Uh, I, <laughs> my guidance counselor told me, that I can't possibly draw comic books 
because that kind of a career doesn't exist. It only exists in like Hollywood or New York City and you know, very few people can do it and, and this kind of thing. And I should probably just do something else like go to a college and find something else to do or join the military. And neither of which I was interested in. I was, you know, yeah, I might have been immature in high school, but I, I knew enough that I wasn't going to go waste my parents' money. We didn't have much money. And I grew up from mostly in a single parent environment. So I wasn't going to waste money trying to figure something out at a $20,000 a year at the time college or something. And I wasn't going to go shoot a gun either. So um, I didn't know what to do. So I took a job at a factory with a friend and just slept around for five years just trying to figure out what to do because my dreams of being an artist were crushed. I stopped drawing because of it. I packed up all my stuff and threw it in the basement. I was done because he told me. Couldn't do it. Were you really good in school, though? As a student? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was a classic underachiever. I found school boring. I really did. I found standardized education a colossal waste of time. And it's funny because it was... To me, it was easy enough that I could draw my pictures and listen, and then the test would come, and I would remember hearing it. I'd remember exactly where the teacher was when he said that, and I'd, I'd get A's and B's on my tests and never take notes and never do the homework, and they would accuse me of cheating constantly. i said, no, I just remember you saying it, I, and they wouldn't believe me because I was drawing all the time. So, uh, yeah, I had a rough time, and math, I just I couldn't. I still can't. I took algebra four times before I could pass it. It was just brutal. So, um, yeah, no, I, I could have been a good student. It wasn't for, it was just lack of effort. I wasn't interested at all in high school. I really wasn't. College was a different story. Okay, so what do you do now? Right now, I'm, I'm brand new at this. Um, <laughs> I joined a company, AJA Video Systems, out of Grass Valley, California, in June. And I've been working once a year for them in Las Vegas at a big industry trade show called NAB, National Association of Broadcasters. They have a booth, and what they do at the show is they staff it with with people who use their equipment in the field professionally so that they're not doing a hard sell at the show. They have actual customers saying, yeah, I use this device all the time, and it's great, and here's how it works. And I've been doing that with them since 2004. And they had this position open in the Northeast a couple of times and uh, I was passed over twice before I finally got it um, so it's worked out great I know that I know almost everyone at the company so it's almost like dropping into a family and and it's been interesting because now I'm not in the production world where I was for 20 something years I'm now on the other side I'm in the manufacturing and sales so now my old clients are now customers and or people I have to support so it's kind of kind of like leaving through the front door and then coming in through the back so but I'm, I'm brand new at it. I'm still kind of getting my footing, and, and it's a different pace. And, but it's been great. It's been really a lot of fun. I've traveled a lot already. You know, they've sent me to Vegas, to Syracuse, Buffalo. I've been all over the place, L.A. So it's kind of fun. Okay, so you went from a teaching job to mm -hmm. this job you have now. No, no, there was a lot in between. Oh, okay. Oh, no, there's a lot in between. <laughs> Can yeah. you explain that? <laughs> yeah, sure. After Quinnipiac, I went to uh, – I kicked around for a year, tried the freelancing thing again, and – it, the freelancing thing didn't work out for me when I was younger because they don't teach you in school how to run your own business and how to go find work and how to represent yourself. It's go get a job at Channel 3 or go get a job at Channel 61. or They don't teach you. You know, you could just do it yourself. You could just be a, a gun for hire, you know, but they don't teach you how to do that. So again, I didn't know how to find work and I was going broke. And then the same job I had at Quinnipiac opened up at Middlesex Community College. Irony of ironies, that's where I went to school. So now I, they hire me, and I move back in with my parents. That's what it felt like. And I had a great time there. But it always felt like I had moved back in with my parents. You know, there was a, there was a, certain, a certain kind of, I never really felt like uh, I was a okay. peer yeah. so much as I was still the, uh, the little boy. And, uh, and it, but it was great. I mean, and... Uh, I, after that, you know, I did that for six, almost seven years, and on top of the two or two at Quinnipiac, I was almost a decade in higher ed, and I was burnt. I was burnt out, and I was still, I was in my early 30s, and I still wondered, can I do, you know, can I make it as a freelancer? And a lot of my friends are freelancing and doing well, and they're like, you got to get out of the school and come join us. And so I threw caution to the wind, and I resigned, and I went and tried. And after the first two years, I thought I made a mistake because I was going broke. <laughs> I was not doing well, and. um 
I was living off credit cards and um, I, I was taking jobs and not getting paid. You know, I, I get stiffed by clients because I didn't know how to negotiate. So I, I went to the school of hard knocks for about two years and got beat up on the streets a little bit. But I learned and then everything turned. And then I had a very successful freelance career right up until I took this job in June. So, you know, and that was, you know, that was another one where I got to travel all over the place and meet a lot of different people and work on a lot of different things. Uh, I spent one summer working in Fenway Park on a movie, a Red Sox movie, and I hate the Red Sox, but it was such a great time. You know, and then in the last year I was out in Santa Barbara for a couple of weeks with Liberty Mutual doing these, uh, these cool things. So at a five-star resort. So it was, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, great things come out of it and I learned so much because one job you might be at Connecticut Light and Power learning stuff about electrical hazards and this and that and then the next week I'm at Pratt and Whitney and I'm learning about aircraft things and military stuff and then the next week I'm you know it's just so it's cool it was cool I had a great time were there any lessons you learned from your first job that you still apply today at Quinnipiac yeah yeah uh, I learned that I need to control my temper Um, when things when I didn't agree with certain philosophies, I mouthed off about it. Um, I got on a soapbox because, you know, when you're in your early 20s, you know everything, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I thought I knew everything. And uh, that was my mistake. I was, I was not political. I learned how to be political by butting heads with the administration at that school. And, uh, you know, I, you, you kind of learn at you, in your early 20s that you can't be a petulant child when things don't go your way. Um, so, yeah, I think when, when they didn't see the philosophies the same, they didn't see it eye to eye, I just I didn't know how to handle the situation. So, you know, in retrospect, I probably should have freelanced until I was in my 40s like I am now and now taking the job at the school, yeah. right? <laughs> I sure did it reverse. Yeah, I, I did it backwards. If you had to describe your first job with one word, what would it be? Educational. Explain. I learned a lot. I learned how to. I learned how to be an adult. By the end, the result wasn't. You know, we didn't arrive at the result we wanted. And I'm friends with all the people now at that school, but at the time, it it, it just wasn't a good fit. I was too young and too immature, and and I didn't see that in myself. So it was educational. I, I learned by the time I got to Middlesex, I learned how to handle myself. Uh, you know, in a in an environment where there's politicking and there's there are policies and procedures, and you just can't. It's not the wild wild west. You know, yeah, we're doing fun, creative things, and yeah, we're teaching students to to be creative. And we want them to kind of be. You know, we're not teaching accounting here. We're not teaching insurance sales. We're teaching creative. So they've got to be kind of loosey goosey, and they got to be off the wall a little bit. But there are still boundaries. It's like with a small child, you have to establish a boundary. Yeah. You know, so. If you could choose your first job all over again, would you choose that same job? No, no. I, I, like I said, I did it backwards. Um, I, now, yes and no. I mean, I struggled as a freelancer. I tried two or three times right out of school to freelance, and it wasn't working because I didn't know how to do it. And, you know, it took my perseverance in my mid-30s to grind it out. And, you know, when you're in your mid-30s, you can find money a little easier than when you're 23 or 24. Um and maybe that's what helped me stick it through that, that last time to make it. But they don't teach you in school, and this is something that all the colleges should really consider is, you know, give a little bit of a business background. Give a, a communication student a little bit of insight into as to how to work for yourself. Because, you know, you can earn a great living working for yourself, but they never date you. You don't know that. I, I left school thinking I had to take a job somewhere. I, I didn't know. So Keith, uh, do you have any tips for anyone trying to get their first job? Yeah, yeah, and that's another lesson I learned. You know, because I went back to college later in life, I went back at 22, 23 years old because, again, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I went to Middlesex Community College. You know, it wasn't like I went to Yale or something, but I still made a promise to myself that I was going to, if I was going to dump this job in this factory and go back to school, that I wasn't going to mess around and I was going to be the best student in the in the class and I worked hard at that and but I also but that perception came with that I thought I had to be the best at what I did and back then things were more specialized you know now you can walk into a mall 
and buy an iMac and a DSLR camera and you're a top to bottom production house. You know, you download your Adobe suite and you're good to go. Back in those days, the rich kids had the toys, you know, and you had to be specialized. It wasn't be a jack of all trades, it was be master of one. So I, I was pretty good at shooting and I liked shooting, but I really liked editing because I liked the fact that you could manipulate the message. I'm like, oh man, you can really mess with, you can make people say whatever you want them to say just by putting things out of context, this is great. So I, I honed my editing craft and, and I thought that you had to be the best at that. And, and this is why I struggled as freelance because I was like, look at all this impressive stuff I have. Okay, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a soul, so no, nobody's gonna hire me. Later in life, I learned that networking is far more important, and it's so cliche because you've probably heard it a hundred times. It's not what you know and who you know. It's true. It's who you know. And part of what helped me was I formed this group in 2003. It was at the time a Final Cut Pro user group. It turned into an all-around digital content creators group. We'd, we'd, we'd meet once a month, and I'd invite people from all over the country to come guest speak, and we'd profile a new piece of equipment. And, but what ended up happening is I suddenly had this tag put on me, I had this perception that I was the Final Cut genius guy. Now granted, I was a good editor, but I was getting hired without anybody ever asking to see my work because I was the Final Cut guy. Because I was the guy that got up on the stage every month and introduced these guests and had a raffle. And I brought these people in the building, so I must be some kind of expert, right? So the whole community got to know who I was. And then once you do a competent job for one of these people, you know, like I was telling you earlier, the cameraman, you know, Mark, and all of a sudden Mark's sending me here and sending me there, and I'm getting calls. Mark said to hire you. John said you can do this job. And so from 2003 until this year when I quit production, mm -hmm. I didn't have a demo reel anymore. I never needed one. I just got phone calls. We, we're going to hire you. So-and-so said I need to hire you. You're the Final Cut guy. Or you're the Avid guy. You're the Premiere guy. So... Um, and it was funny, that was a lesson learned. I was like, God, all those, all those hours in the past making these slick demo reels and showing how great an editor I can be didn't matter because nobody wanted to see it. <laughs> it. It was who I knew. So my advice to young people is get out there and get your face out there and find professional organizations. There are several in the state. In fact, my user group's coming back with a different person in charge this fall and you should look out for that and get out there and just be visible. And yeah, it's great, you should know what to do because you could get hired and be incompetent and then, then that reputation will, will precede you just as quickly too. So you do have to be good at what you do, but you have to, have to, have to be a face in the community. You have to be a face in the crowd. Thank you.